GraphQL as a service is a new way to use AppWrite alongside or instead of classic REST and real-time API. With full support for authentication, databases, functions, and storage, the choice is yours. Build, create, and innovate with the new GraphQL service. I've updated our demos for React example to include our new GraphQL service. Here you can see that we've broken out databases and locale just for clarity. I'll show you the application and then we'll break down some code. Here you can see on our locale screen, we have each of our different endpoints available. On the very end, we also have one called all. This has every single endpoint data that you can find. I'm gonna show you how we set this up in GraphQL and why it's important that GraphQL is available. Here's one of the examples where we have a list of the continents. I'm gonna go ahead and show you the GraphQL for get continents. Here you can see it's a simple query that has the locale list continents in it. We pass that back to the front end. Now, this is the same as the REST service API. However, what we can do in our all component is get all of those at once. So as you can see here, we have all of the different models for each one of our endpoints. If I go to get locale all, you'll see that our query is significantly larger, including every single one of our endpoints and the data available in it. Let's take a look at the network tab. As you can see here, once I click each one of the endpoints on the different tabs, each one of these will call a GraphQL endpoint. They roughly are about the same in speed. Now, the difference here is that I can also click all and it will get all of that same data in almost the same time as a single call. You'll notice that the payload is much larger. It's really great to be able to query data, but we also need to update data or create data. So let's take a look at this simple to-do list. If I add Alex and click add, you'll notice it drops in and adds that. Let's go ahead and take a look at the code for mutations as well. You can find our to-dos component within the databases directory. An initial load will actually use the list to do's. This list to do's calls documents. And what we're going to do here is just query all of our documents that we have within this collection. Next, what we're going to do is create a to do. As you saw in the application, all we have to do is type in a value and then create the to do. Within create to do, we have this create document where we send in the database ID, the collection ID, and our current to do. Here you can see our GraphQL query. We have a mutation that's occurring on the create document endpoint. You know that these variables are being passed in GraphQL by the dollar sign that is in front. We have one special one where it's document ID. We actually pass ID unique, so it'll create the document ID on the database. Once we receive that data back, we actually update to do's directly from the information coming back. That way we don't have to call the list to do once again. One final item, we have delete to do. Let's take a look at delete. Here you can see that we have the mutation delete document. All that we need to pass is the document ID. Once this has been completed, we can pop that off our list. At times, it'll be easier to just jump into the GraphQL Explorer that AppRite has created. Here you can see we have our query locales. If I send that query, you'll see exactly all of the information that we got before. You can do the same with the create or list documents as we looked at within the JavaScript code. One thing to remember, when you set your headers, make sure you pass in the x-appright-project, otherwise you'll get an error.